Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is the so many questions tag. So this tag was thought up by the lovely JJ from the Camden Stitch and Laura from the Specky Seamstress and then there was a whole bunch of other people who added questions in and I think there are a total of 40 questions to choose from. So in April, rather than put up a pattern for my Patreon peeps to vote on, I put up the list of questions and asked you guys which you would like me to answer and the votes were split and there were quite a lot of them and you wanted me to definitely answer more than 10. So I'm gonna work my way through and answer all the questions. You can find the questions in the description box down below and if you guys want to take part and make your own video, please pick and choose from the questions, answer all 40 and put your video up using the so many questions tag. So let's get started. This is going to be a long video because there were a lot of votes for a lot of questions. Telling you that now, grab yourself a cuppa. Question number one, how and when did you start sewing? I remember going to the shop with my mum to buy fabric for a pattern and it ended up buying fluorescent pink jersey to make a jumpsuit with that I actually never made, but I put, was adamant and put my foot down that I wanted this fluorescent pink thing. But sewing's always been in my life. My nana sewed, mum sewed for us when we were kids. And then it kind of been something that has been there for forever. I got really fed up with not being able to find clothes on the high street that would fit me because I have big boobs, a small waist, a big butt and a long torso. So trying to find things that actually met in the middle and hit me on my waist and uh, then weren't indecent short skirt wise or top wise were, were interesting. So I started making my own things, not very frequently and not very successfully. I have put up a video of my early makes and uh, some of those are pretty awful, but I got the bug and enjoyed it. And then it was about five and a half years ago, six years ago now, there is a blogger called Forever Amber and she also runs the website Superwoman and she'd set a challenge to try and like wear all of your beautiful shoes and you had to wear a pair and document it and then they got saved and any shoes by the end of the year that hadn't been worn you would donate or sell. So I started this challenge and uh, Dolly Clackett, Roisin of Dolly Clackett fame was also taking part. I absolutely loved her shoes and then she, I was reading her blog through this one and she had made the By, La By Hand London Anna dress. I discovered the world of indie patterns and basically was hooked from there. The By Hand London Anna dress sew along taught me how to do a full bust adjustment and to lengthen the torso to fit me. I didn't like the skirt on me so I made a circle skirt. I French seamed that thing. I used bias binding. All these things that I'd never heard of before and I absolutely love that dress and I still have that dress. I It was a um, green with gold four leaf clovers all over it. I wore that when I took my driving test and passed first time. So that is my lucky, lucky dress. That was how I kind of stumbled into this world of sewing and five and a half years later, here I am with my own channel trying to help you guys learn to do all the stuff that I learned from the internet. I am completely self-taught. So yes, that's how and when I started sewing. <laughs> Question number two is how much time do you spend sewing? As much as possible, it is my full-time job. I am so lucky, I love my job. Question number three is who supports your sewing at home? And if you guys have watched any of the vlogs, you will know that the FWIF, AKA the Fabric Washing Fairy, my father, and the Quilting Queen, the QQ, my mum, are incredibly supportive. And so much so that my mum has even got the sewing bug and has gone from sewing quilts and things back into sewing garments for herself and is really enjoying it. So I have the most amazing support at home. I am very, very lucky. I live in my parents back garden for those of you that don't know. Question number four is what is your dream job? This! This is my dream job. I am a very lucky person. I get to do what I love every single day which is why I think I enjoy it as much as I do and it doesn't really feel like work although believe me running a YouTube channel is hard work, more hard work than I had ever imagined but it's just amazing absolutely amazing and i have branched out into teaching in real life like not just the youtube tutorials but actually going and teaching people and that has just been such an eye opener and i'm amazed by how much i absolutely love doing that so yeah i am i am doing my dream job question number five what's your spirit animal uh basically chiana i kind of slightly chubby beautiful uh feline and um I think she's gone out now but yes she was sitting around disdaining me earlier she has the best life ever my mum's always said that if she was ever reincarnated she want she'd want to come back as my cat not just a cat my cat in particular 
battery died, had to change that. My other spirit animal would be a magpie because I like all the shiny things. Question six, planner or improviser? I kind of both. I mean, if you've watched any of my planner videos, you know I absolutely adore stationery and planning and I have my planner right next to me here. Really, 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 really rely on that. I didn't use it for a couple of months. Felt very, very scattered, but I have started using it again daily and I am so much more productive, which is great. I do like the spontaneity of improvisation. So yeah, both, both, but more of a planner, I think. Question seven is, do you have any pet helpers? Yes, Chiana. Question number eight is your worst sewing habit. My worst sewing habit would have to be ignoring the instructions, especially when I first started out sewing. They would say, stay stitch the neckline. And I'd be like, why? What's the point? Not gonna do that. And then wondered why I had gapey gapey necklines. So yeah, I used to skip uh, instructions that didn't make sense to me. But now that I have learned a little bit more about why you do the things that the instructions ask you to do, I um, do tend to follow them a little bit more. But if you have watched any of my sew alongs, you will know that I tend to read the instructions and then just say, yeah, we're not gonna do it that way. We're gonna do this instead. So yeah, not following the instructions, but something that is said quite a lot is that you need to learn the rules in order to break them. And whilst I definitely don't know all the rules and I definitely think that there are many different ways of achieving the same end in sewing, it is helpful to know why somebody's asking you to do something for you that to then choose to ignore it. So yes, ignoring instructions. Question nine is when you aren't sewing, what are you doing? Now the answer is editing. <laughs> yeah, basically I spend my entire life either filming, editing, sewing, cutting out. I go to the cinema, I try and go dancing. I'm gonna try and do that this evening. And uh, yeah, I need to get more exercise in my life. So yeah, need to get more of the dancing in, but editing. Editing tends to be what I'm doing when I'm not sewing. Question 10 is where are you from? I was born in Greenwich in London. Question 11 is where do you sew? I am very lucky that mum and I have a dedicated sewing room in the main house so I go down to the main house every day to go to work. Question 12 is what sewing machine do you own? I have a Benina 830 and it is incredibly expensive and it has am amazing bells and whistles that you totally don't need. I was in a position that I could buy whatever I wanted so I bought the top of the line model and I had one issue with one of the sensors, they fixed that and since then it has been an absolute workhorse. I have had to have two computer boards replaced in it recently last year because I hadn't kept up with the service and maintenance schedule on it and I hadn't had it serviced before five years but other than that it, the thing is amazing and I absolutely love it and I wouldn't trade it in for the world. Question 14 is how do you store your patterns? I have the majority of my paper patterns in a CD tower or CD towers now plural uh, from Ikea and then all my PDF patterns are organized by type and then co uh, company and then type on my laptop and the ones that I have printed out are put into A4 file folders which are then stored in magazine folders in the sewing room as well. Try to be as organized as possible because I probably now have well over 400 patterns so I need to keep on top of making sure that they are all organized and I can find what I want when I want. Question 15 is how big is your stash? It's tiny. It's really, really, really small. I have a very small stash. I, I don't hoard excesses amount of fabric and uh, yeah, I um, really should try and buy some more because I don't have very much at all. Question 16 is what inspires you? Location, family, work, etc. I get inspiration from everywhere. I used to be a huge clothing fanatic addict. I, I would happily shop till I dropped on the high street. I love clothes and as I said, majority of them didn't fit me and I was kind of making do and smooshing things together and kind of hoping that it would work and it majority of the time was okay, but it wasn't brilliant. So now I get my inspiration from places like, I love looking through Net-A-Porter or Pinterest and I have giant, huge different um, boards on Pinterest of all the different skirt inspirations and jumper inspirations and top inspiration and coat inspiration and jumpsuit inspiration, all of those things. So I find the inspiration everywhere. Instagram is another huge source of inspiration for me. I love following you guys on Instagram. The I get so many fabulous ideas and different combinations of fabrics and patterns from you guys so you know inspiration comes from everywhere totally question 17 is proudest make or moment and i have said this a couple of times in different sort of iterations of this video that i've done but i still think my proudest make is my sister-in-law's wedding dress that thing was a nightmare 
in time wise because reasons she looked absolutely stunning on the day and it was beautiful and it was what she wanted and i was so so honored that she'd asked me to make it especially as i'd only really been properly sewing for about a year and a half so it was altogether terrifying and a rewarding experience but yeah that i think that's definitely still my proudest make now question number 18 is most disastrous make or moment i have got loads of disastrous makes that i have shown you guys in my early makes video i had the one that sticks out at the moment in my mind now is I was making an Anderson blouse hack. I was kind of doing an elasticated waistband on it with this really, really pretty sheer and satin checked turquoise fabric that I got from Minerva Crafts. I was French seaming the arms onto the bodice and I was trimming off the excess fabric from the seam allowance to then press it and sew it again. And I trimmed a hole through the um, sleeve and I, it was so close to being finished that was the last thing that needed doing. I'd done everything else on this thing and I, I, yeah, it wasn't salvageable. I, there was a slight problem with the length of the torso or the length of the blouse anyway. So I knew that it was only ever going to be kind of like a wearable muslin if it got worn at all. But that just, oh, that was so frustrating because it was just me not paying attention and just being a little too gung-ho so I won't ever do that again or at least I will but I will try not to ever do that again I will be paying attention when I'm trimming my seams but yeah that was that was a disaster but I can't think of any disastrous makes other than the ones like I say that I showed you in that my early makes video which are quite funny and oh my god I wore those things out in public with holes in them and no finishing and fraying and yeah but you know I've made it I was proud Question 19 is biggest sewing hopes and challenges. I think my biggest sewing hope is that I get to continue doing this for a living. And I am hoping and planning to go to Australia on holiday next January, but I would very much like to teach some classes out there as well. So I'm hoping to get that organized. I'm also hoping to go and do similar things in America. I would love to travel the world and kind of do that in a sewing capacity if possible. I mean, how amazing would it be to travel the world and take you fabric shopping in different countries and like that sort of thing. Yeah, that would be totally amazing. I That is what I would like from this channel. I love teaching. I love doing this and I want it to continue for as long as you guys are willing to watch me. So that is my biggest sewing hope. And the challenge is going to be making that happen. So yes, that. <laughs> Question 20 is woven or knit? Both, both, totally both. Although I was terrified of knits for the longest time, I had a serger or overlocker that I bought at the same time as I bought my 830 and it sat in a corner for five years not being used because I was terrified of it. I now love that thing. So uh, don't be scared of knits, give it a go. And uh, Tilly and the buttons. Try, try one of her patterns if you want to work with knits for the first time. Her instructions are awesome. Okay, so that was the first 20 questions and Patreon will only put, allow me to put a poll of 20 options up. So here is the second part. Question 21 is the most used pattern. I think that's easy. That's the by hand London Anna bodice. I think I have 28 of that bodice now. I think I will make more. It's one of those patterns that I go to if I've ever lost my sojo I can go I can make one of those and it looks awesome it's easy to make and it's really good for so many different types of fabrics and so many different types of bottoms to be put on it. I've made jumpsuits out of it I've made dresses out of it I love that bodice so yeah by hand London and a bodice definitely my most used pattern. Question 22 is what one piece of advice would I give myself if I could go back to when I first started sewing? The instructions are there for a reason and they are asking you to do the things for a reason and trust them until you know better follow the instructions <laughs> i mean you, once you've done it and you know what what the whole point is you can then as i say make the rules up and as you go along but when you're first starting out don't be surprised if things don't go according to plan if you ignore what they tell you to do so read the instructions and follow them Question 23 is roughly how many makes a month? Last year I was incredibly prolific. I think I made over a hundred and something, 120 different things. This year I think I'm up to about 30 things so far and a lot of those, at least 10 of those are necessary clutch wallets. So I am definitely behind, but I fully intend to over, be overly ambitious and over plan and make all the things all the time for the rest of this year to catch up. So it's it's been varied. It's been varied, but I, I like to try and make at least sort of two or three things a month 
at the moment I'm going to be upping that because as I say this is my full-time job question 24 is who do you sew for now just myself I used to sew commissions for customers and I both enjoyed and hated it all at the same time I loved making things and seeing their face when it was finished I hated the process because I was utterly terrified the entire way through that it was going to go wrong that they'd find out that I was a fraud that I didn't know what I was doing that it wasn't going to fit that they wouldn't like it and yeah I used to do that and I'm so glad that I don't do that anymore because the stress was not good for me but I absolutely love teaching how to make things because I get to keep all the things that I make whilst I'm showing you how I make them so yes I sew for me now every now and again I will sew for somebody else I have a bag and a coat to make for small girl type creature so every now and again I will sew for other people but the majority of the time it's sewing for me Question 25 is who taught you to sew? Definitely my mum and my nana taught me to use a sewing machine, but I would say that YouTube and the internet taught me to sew, and if I can do it, you can do it. So that's why I made this channel, is to try and kind of like document my progress, and then also hopefully bring you guys tips and tricks that I've learned along the way as well. Question 26 is where is your favorite place to buy fabric? It would have to be the Textile Center, Sherwood Fabrics, Fabric Styles. I think they're the three shops that I shop at the most. If I had the money and the time, I would be shopping on the Gold Hawk Road all the time. I would love to go to Joel's and Son, McCulloch and Wallace. I have done a video about my 19 favorite fabric or haberdashery shops because I couldn't stop at just 10. 19 sounded like a good number. So there are many, but I think Textile Center, Sherwood Fabrics and Fabric Styles are the places that I go to the most regularly at the moment. Although there are many more, many more. Question 27 is favorite pa pattern company and if you could only sew from their patterns for the rest of your life. I'd have to say McCall's because the range that they do is amazing. I love the fact that they do the full bust adjustment, the cut, the, you know, the different cup sizes for majority of their patterns now. It's the largest portion of my pattern collection is McCall's patterns and whenever they release like the Vogue ones or the Butterick or McCall's I always end up wanting pretty much all of the McCall's ones whereas with the Butterick and Vogue I usually like them but there's a few that I'm just like oh I must have that but with the McCall's I want all of them. My McCall's current list from the last two releases is around about 25 patterns so uh, yeah McCall's definitely. Question 28 is most favourite and least favourite sewing task? Leveling hems. I hate leveling hems because I'm always so worried that I'm going to bugger it up and it's all going to go wrong but yeah I really don't like leveling hems and I don't like waiting for the hem to be leveled so that or to be ready to be leveled so yeah it adds extra time into the waiting process of making this garment so leveling hems my favorite sewing task is when you get to you've bagged something out and you get to pull it through and reveal what you've done I love that that sense of accomplishment when you're pulling everything through and suddenly it looks like a, either a coat or a dress or a bag or something like that I just I love that 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 moment when it all comes through and you're like Ta -da! so uh, that's why I film myself doing those quite frequently and kind of speed it up because it's just it's just magic to me I love that part and especially when like bagging out a sleeve on a coat when you've worked out how that happens in your head and that you can do it by machine and it's it's just you do it and you haven't created a Mobius loop it is actually a usable sleeve I love that part of sewing that reveal of when you've done something and it's just like and here we go so yeah that part <laughs> question 29 is printed or PDF printed definitely I love the packaging I want the packaging I actually just re received the deer and doe Sirocco jumpsuit and I missed out on the first round of it and the discount on it because I didn't get in there quick enough to buy the paper pattern and they said oh no we, we won't pre we won't do pre-orders but you could buy the PDF and have it printed and I just didn't I waited until it was back and I have got the paper pattern now I I like the packaging that's just me so yes printed question 30 is the best tip or technique that I've learnt from YouTube I would say anything that I've learnt from Anika from made to sew putting in facings the correct way with a zip French seaming a sleeve yeah anything on Anika's channel that that I just I I'm I'm still completely blown away by the fact that she's willing to let me come and visit her in Australia next year uh, so yes anything anything from me to so 
if you don't follow that channel you should question 31 how has your style changed since you've started sewing well i think i am wearing things that i love more often and i am being more adventurous i used to live in a uniform of jeggings and t-shirts and a cardigan and whilst I have recently discovered a pair of jeans that actually fit me uh, they're ready to wear jeans and I haven't made myself some jeans yet I will be and I've started bringing those back into my sort of daily stuff to wear more often definitely since I've started sewing I've been able to create things that I love in prints that I adore and I totally don't mind being overdressed for any occasion. I will happily wear a dress. I mean, I'm wearing a jumpsuit today. I would quite happily go into town in this jumpsuit. I, you know, don't mind being overdressed in the slightest. And I get to create the things that I love in the patterns that I love, in the prints that I love. So I'm definitely a bit more flamboyant now that I'm sewing because I can make the things that I had wished existed on the high street before. Question 32 is favorite YouTube sewing channels. There are so, 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 so many like so, so, so many, and they all bring something different to the table, and I really enjoy, my my entire feed is basically just different sewing channels. As I said, Anika from Made to Sew is taught me so much. I absolutely love her channel, and will watch everything that she puts up. I think I even watched like the basic how to begin sewing videos that she did, which I knew how to thread a machine, but you know, I, I still watch that because I wanted to support the channel. And then I love Liz from Liz Sews. I just, she, I, I, I'm really probably going to freak her out now, but if she, if she even got this far in the video, but I just absolutely love watching her makes videos, her bra making videos. She has such similar taste to me, I think, in the stuff that she likes to make. And uh, yeah, I just feel like we would be friends if we ever met. So not to freak you out, Liz, but please be my friend. <laughs> Another channel that I will watch whatever she puts up is Angela Clayton. I support her on Patreon as well. I just adore everything that that girl does. I sometimes sort of watch her techniques and think, oh, that's different. I wouldn't have done it that way, but okay. And you know, I, like I say, I adore the things that she makes and she is amazing at draping. I have bought the majority of the patterns that she's released with McCall's that I could get my hands on. So yeah, I absolutely adore hers as well. But there are so, so many. If I started to try to list all the channels that I watch, we'd be here for a very long time and I would definitely miss people off, which I wouldn't mean to do. So they are the three channels that I, the minute that they put a video up, I will drop everything and watch them. And then all the other ones are in my subscribe list. So you can have a look at my who I subscribe to list and see in there. But yes, so many, so many really, really good channels. Rachel from Stitcher, oh God, I can't, know. too many, too many. <laughs> Question 33 is favorite fashion designer. I like lots of different ones for different reasons. Tom Ford, because the stuff that he does is amazing. Zimmerman, because the stuff that they do is amazing. And the two of them are so completely different. I think I just, I, I, I like, what I like I don't there's not a particular aesthetic that I follow and yeah I it, it I couldn't narrow it down to just one I don't think Vivian Westwood is another one that I love Bowman Dior so many so so many and I take inspiration from all of them they all do things that I love they all do things that I wouldn't necessarily wear myself but can appreciate as a piece of art and there are do things that are just plain awful so many many different designers question 34 is heels or flats both both but heels if I can heels if I'm not trying to walk on a hill like this which is what the most of the island looks like question 35 is ice lolly or ice creams ice creams definitely all the way question 36 is Paris or New York I've only ever been to Paris once and I've never been to New York I would like to go back to both Paris is probably going to be more likely because it's closer every now and again my phone actually thinks I'm in Paris because of where we live um, every now and again the GPS gets confused and I wake up and suddenly I'm in Paris if only I'd been given more notice I think both question 37 is gym bunny or couch potato I am a couch potato with the aspirations of a gym bunny I want the gym bunny body I did try and get fit last year and actually backfired massively so I am taking things a lot easier this year and I'm trying to work and build my fitness levels up. I'm getting there very slowly. I am doing yoga and it's working slowly. But I think rather than jump in at the deep end like I did last year and, and really mess myself up, this is probably the better way to go. A 38 is current box set. I've just finished watching What If on Netflix. Also Good Omens on Amazon. Highly recommend both of those. And I've just started watching Poldark, the new season rather than the old season on Netflix. And so far, I'm very much enjoying the lead actor. He is very, very, very handsome. 
Um, so yeah, I guess po Poldock is what I'm watching at the moment. Question 39, is tea or coffee? Neither, I do have the occasional cup of tea every now and again, usually with cake, usually in the main house and usually because mum and dad are making it. But caffeine is not my friend and I am a little bit loopy on it. I have never in my life had a cup of coffee. I don't like the smell and I have mistakenly eaten coffee chocolates every now and again and uh, yeah, if you've watched mum's reaction to coconut chocolate in the Christmas videos, the vlogmases, then that's pretty much my reaction to coffee chocolate, so yeah, neither. And the last question is, tell us two truths and one lie. I use this question loads when I'm teaching, it's a good icebreaker, but having put myself on the spot now, I can't think of anything. Okay, so my heritage is English, Australian, Irish, Welsh. I have lived in Australia very briefly and I play World of Warcraft. Can you guess which is the lie? <laughs> okay, so that is it. That's all 40 questions. This video is probably going to be incredibly long. If you do want to do this, you can pick and choose the questions that you want to answer. You don't need to answer them all. My Patreon peeps, which you will be seeing a nice long quick list running along the bottom here, all voted on these questions and there were only a couple that didn't get any votes at all so I thought I might as well answer a lot. I want to say thank you very much to all these Patreon peeps for your continued support. It really really does mean the world to me and it does mean that I can continue to do what I love and what hopefully you guys are enjoying so thank you very very much. It is very much appreciated. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!